Light is light. So whether you're using video lights or you're using strobes, all of this is the same. The only difference between a video light and a strobe is the strobe turns on for a fraction of a second. The video light is constantly on. So this is going to work for you if you need to shoot something in video and have a white background, or if you're shooting photos and you need a white background, or you need a black background. You can take a plain white background and take it gray, take it black, take it white. You can do whatever you need to do with it. Let's talk about the space considerations you need for white seamless, especially for full length portraits. Now, the area that I'm sitting in now, I have a pretty small studio. This shooting area is 16 feet wide. And from that white background to where my camera is usually placed is at 25 feet. And the clearance that I have to the ceilings is uh, over 14 feet. It's 14, 15 feet to the ceilings. And that's a pretty, good size room. That's the minimum that I would want. I've been asked many times about shooting white seamless inside of a like small spare bedroom, 10 feet by 10 feet with nine foot ceilings. And you could pull off a headshot in a small room, but you're not going to be pulling off full length seamless in a small room. For this kind of thing, especially full length, you're going to need uh, a little bit of space. Now, the rest of the stuff that we have going on here is the white seamless background. You'll notice it's not a nine foot roll of white seamless. This seamless background is something that I found online one day, thought I'd try it. It's made by Photo Basics. It's a stretchy kind of white material that is smooth on one side and kind of a fleece texture on the other side. I typically shoot against the smooth side. I run that through a crossbar, put that onto two light stands and stick that up. And then I use some A clamps to stretch the material out, get it nice and taut so there are no wrinkles anywhere in the material. I lay the material out on the floor and then I put two pieces of tile board on the floor. Let me show you what tile board is. So the stuff that you're looking for is this tile board or also known as thrifty white panel board. And my current Home Depot is out of stock of the stuff. And we're in the area where you would find paneling and stuff like that. Sometimes I find it in plumbing. Sometimes they have it in lumber. Uh, in fact, uh, they do have some of this in lumber, but it's on the top shelf and they're going to get some, I guess. But thrifty white panel board, also known as tile board. And that's what you're looking for. Just want more of it. I have my white seamless set up. I have my tile board down and now I'm going to bring my lights. I need a minimum of three lights. That's typically how I light a white seamless is three lights. It's two lights for the background and one light for the subject. Now, when you get your white seamless set up, you can light your subject any way you want. If you want to do a main light and then a fill, or you want to do some sort of you know, two light setup on a subject, that's fine. Typically what I'm doing for a seamless is one light on the subject, two lights on the background. There are different ways that you can keep the background lights from hitting your subject. This is kind of a key part of setting up a white seamless. You want the background lights to hit the background, but not your subject. Now in the past, I've used some bifold doors that I bought at a home improvement store. But these days I'm just using barn doors on the back lights and I've found that that works pretty well. Another thing that I have set up that's a little different than what I've done in the past is I have two large black backgrounds that are just set up on crossbars on each side of the set. This is a fairly small space to be working in. I'm surrounded by white walls and a white ceiling. And when that background fires off, it basically becomes a huge light source and it lights up all the walls, all the ceiling, all of that. And I usually like to minimize that wrap and that spill coming from all over the place. So I just put a couple of black fabric backgrounds up on each side of the set. And that kind of 
helps control that spill. I have a softbox set up for the main light. That's my starting point for this particular shot. And you can light your subject any way you want. A softbox, an umbrella, a beauty dish, a grid, whatever light you like falling on your subject, set that up for your subject light and then two lights on the background. It's taken me about 15 minutes from sweeping the floor to setting everything up and getting my lights out and my camera ready to go. Now that we have all the gear out and ready, set, let's find our exposure. I want to visually demonstrate what the two different areas of lighting a white background looks like. So we've got the white background here, of course, page here. We have three lights running on this set. We have two on the background, we have one as a main. I'm coming back to the camera to run the camera and direct the lights to go on and off as needed. I am back at the main camera that you are watching right now. And on camera left, we've got Dan on the background light. Kick that light. There we go. Gene, we got Gene on camera right on the background light. There we are. And we have Caleb on the main. Fantastic. So we have three lights on this set. Two are on the background and one is a main light that is lighting page at the moment. So let's take a look at what this room looks like when we kill all the lights. Now, when you're setting up a white seamless, you need to be thinking about you're lighting the background separately from lighting the subject. So let's light the subject first. Caleb, kick that main light on and we have Paige. So Paige is lit, she's well exposed. Uh, if I open up my aperture anymore, she starts to go overexposed. If I start to close down my aperture, she starts to go underexposed. So let's bring that aperture back up to about where it was. Should be about there. Now, to get that white background to go white, you really need to light it. And the most efficient and easiest way to do it is with a minimum of two lights on each side of the set. So Dan, kick your light on and we can see that we've got one half of the set on camera left starting to blow to white. Now, Gene, cut your light on. Now we have the entire set going to white. That entire background is going white. And we have Paige separated from that background light. So the lights that are physically hitting the background are not hitting Paige. Dan, go ahead and swing your background light around uh, to where it starts to hit page. As Dan's light starts to swing around and starts to hit page, we're going to start to blow out a little edge of her shirt. You can see the, the light hitting her hair there. Now swing it back to the background. We'll watch the background start to blow back to white. There we go. Now Paige, what I want you to do is to walk back into those lights. And this is what it looks like if everything starts to hit her. With Paige standing in the background lights, you can see that she's totally overexposed. And what's happening here is that we have more light on the background than we have on Paige. So Paige, come on back up to your mark in the front. She comes out of those background lights. And I can focus the camera. So the light on page is mainly, pretty much, predominantly only from the main light. Caleb, kill that main light. And page becomes pretty much a silhouette. Now you can see some detail on page. One reason that's happening is because the light is hitting the background and that whole entire seamless background is basically like a huge face of a softbox and it's kicking light all over the place. It's hitting the ceiling, it's hitting the walls. You'll notice that those black curtains I have set up are to help minimize some of that spill from the rest of the environment. If I really wanted to kill all the light on page that's coming from the background, then I either paint my ceiling black or I fly a black fabric above her. 
Now one easy way to do it is I can still maintain some white and I can bring down my exposure a little bit. But if I bring it down too much, I start to lose the white background altogether. So I'm gonna bring that back up to white and I don't want it to be blown out too much. Here's what it looks like if I have a background that is way too bright. Let me just open this thing up. And as I start to expose for page there, only the background lights are on right now. So all the light is bouncing around the room, off the ceiling, off walls, off whatever. And you can see how much the contrast has been killed. So I'm going to go back to my original setting. We bring her to silhouette. Caleb, turn on that main light. And once I get Paige properly exposed, then there's still good contrast on her. Her hair isn't going, you know, really flat. The, the contrast is good. The shadows are nice and punchy. The highlights are crisp and clean, but notice her white shirt is not bleeding into the background because her white shirt isn't pure, 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 pure white. And you want to make sure you maintain that. If you start to set up your white seamless shot and you start to get something like this, as I dork with the camera, her shirt starts to bleed into that background. You are overexposing your subject. So the main thing you need to consider is get the subject lit first and get that exposure dead on and then start to light your background. So let's cut the background lights again. I will find this exposure first. I'm going to make sure that she's not overexposed and she's not underexposed. I want to find that exposure. And then once that exposure is set, uh, Jean and Dan, take your lights, rotate them off to the sides of the set, not towards Paige. All right, you guys set? Jean, you set? All right. So Dan and Jean have turned their lights away from the set. Go ahead and kick those lights on, guys. And you can see that there's not enough light on the background yet. We need to increase the amount of light on the background. If you don't have that proper ratio, and it's about a stop and a half from subject to background, without that proper ratio, you're going to get kind of a light gray background, which might be something you want. So if you want it to be slightly lighter gray, then you don't put as much light on it. Now guys in the back, go ahead and rotate those lights turned on back to the background. And as we're adding more light to the background, here comes jeans. Now we've got our pure white background. So we have with the lights off in the background, we have a gray background. All right. And lights back on, we have a white background. Now we can take that background many different shades of gray. So with the lights off on the background, it's this kind of medium gray and lights back on and now start to rotate those lights off of the background away from page. We start to get a lighter background, not pure white yet, but it's a light gray. Now let's try to make this darker. Now the first thing we can do to get this background to start to go darker is that we can flag the main light off of the background. So I've got Caleb holding up a flag that is cutting the light coming from the main light. There's only one light on set right now and that is lighting page and the flag is coming in place to kill light hitting the background. Go ahead and move that flag out, Caleb and move that flag back in. So let's say you're using a main light like a soft box. You could feather the light from the soft box onto the background 
or off of the background. We can start to make this background darker by flagging off the main light source that's hitting the subject. But another way to think about getting that to go darker is inverse square law. Now inverse square law is a lot of math and a lot of physics and a lot of that stuff. But basically what's happening is as a subject is close to the light source, the light is falling off very quickly and dramatically close to the light source. As you get further and further and further away from the light source, then your, your exposure is gradually changing. So your exposure is changing very quickly as you get close to the light source and gradually as you're getting away from it. So let's demonstrate that uh, with the video lights. What I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna make it very dramatic, is I'm gonna remove the scrim, I'm gonna bring in the hot light very close, and I'm going to go back to the camera and start changing all my exposures. So let me get that set up. And it's about to get really bright without the scrim. And I'm gonna pull this in very close like so. There we go. Let's see how this looks. Let me change exposure on camera number two. Okay. Let's get this exposure under control. I don't want to underexpose her. I don't want to overexpose her. It's Goldilocks. It's just bright. So here is about proper exposure on page right now. And we've pretty much killed the light on the background because of the inverse square law. So the light is sitting maybe two and a half feet away from page at the moment. It is still hitting the background, but page is nine feet away from this background back here. The light is falling off dramatically close to the light source, gradually away from the light source, Bringing that light in closer to your subject will help to bring that exposure on the background down. Now, let's see what this looks like. I'm going to point that light a little more to the background for this. So, we can see just a little bit of the background. What I want you to do, Paige, is to walk back to your back mark. Good. So as Paige has walked back, you can see that she's much darker. The exposure has dropped. As I bring my exposure up on her, and that would be somewhere around proper exposure, our background has gotten lighter. What's happening here is the light is falling off, falling off. Here is the exposure where she was standing. I'm overexposed now. She's properly exposed. The light is falling off, falling off, falling off hits page, hits the background. The difference in exposure right here where page is to the background right here within a few feet is not that different. So the exposure on page and the exposure on the white background is about the same. All right, page now walk on back up to the light. And as she gets closer, I'm gonna change my exposure and find my focus. All right. Now, Paige, walk back. And now walk forward again. To fully kill the light on the background, you just need a little bit more help in a situation like this. So Caleb, jump in there with the flag and flag that off of the background right about there. I'll take my light, I'll rotate my light a little bit away from that background, and then that should do it. Yep. We now have a properly exposed subject. We have a black background. And this is all happening with Paige being nine feet away from that white wall. 
So from the modifiers that you use, say something like grid spots or soft boxes that have grids in them, you can flag that light off of the background and you make sure that it's in close and you have some distance from the subject to the background, you can take the white background and make it black. Caleb, go ahead and kick that light out, the flag out. Good. All right, now, Dan and Gene, go ahead and kick your lights on. Dan and Gene's lights are the same power and the same setting and the same everything as they were before, but that background is not white anymore. The reason being is the ratio has changed. I have brought the light closer to page, the main light. It's closer to page. I got rid of the scrim, so it's much brighter on her. So the difference in exposure on page to the white background is a lot different than where it was before. To get the background to go white in this situation right now, we need to add more light to the background. But currently, we don't have any more light to add to the background. It's all about this ratio. So if the light is brighter on page, then what we need to do is bring page's exposure down. Caleb, go ahead and take that light and back it away from page. Let's get it pulled back from her. She starts to go darker. Okay, that's good. Let's try that. So I have a light on page. I have lights on the background. I can't add any more light to the background. And you'll run into this situation, especially when you're using hot shoe flash to light up a white background. You've got your background lights to full power. You need some more light. Uh, you can't get this ratio set correctly. One thing that could probably be happening is the light on your subject is too bright. So with all of the lights the same, I'm going to bring overall exposure up, get page to proper exposure, and our background starts to go white because we're getting close to that optimal exposure range from the foreground to the background. Now, if I get my background to go completely white, page is starting to get overexposed. So what's happening here is I've just gotten the background just right to white, but Paige is still overexposed. She has too much light on her. So Caleb, back that main light off of her some more. As that background light or that main light goes away, that's good right there. Her exposure is properly set. And now we have our ratio. Now the light on Paige isn't all that great, but you see what I'm saying. Let's do this again. Um, we've got pure white. I want to take it to black. That simply means I bring my light in closer, kill the background lights. Now that the light is closer to page, I change my exposure to compensate for that and that background goes away. It's really kind of that simple. Now, Paige, go ahead and back up to your back mark. And off into the shadows she goes. And now into your front mark. And from the shadows she emerges. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna kill the video lights, we're gonna set up strobes, and we're gonna go full length with it, and then we'll move into post-production and what we do with it from there. So, uh, Fantastic. Take a break. Here we go. Seriously? No. It's a bad Zach test fire. <laughs> <laughs> 